Welcome to the Idaho Business Podcast, the only Idaho podcast focused on providing profits for Idaho people. If you love our state and love small business, you are in the right place. We interview local legends, learn business, and have way too much fun doing it. You're listening to the Idaho Business Podcast with your friend, host, and all-around great guy and owner of New Clean Commercial Cleaning, Spencer Ward. Well, welcome, everyone. We're here today with Keith Zundell, Vice President of Commercial Loans uh, in the Bank of Idaho. Uh, he's a commercial loan officer in the Bank of Idaho in Pocatello. Uh, you want to go see a charming face that's going to help you. He's the guy to help you. Uh, Keith, he's a Pocatello born and raised kid. I've known this kid for, not a kid, and he's a man, you know, but I'm, when I knew him, you were a kid, you know. True. Uh, <laughs> but you're, yeah, so to over 20 years now, we've known each other, uh, and this kid's been in, this guy's been in the, the business for, what, 12, 13 years in the banking industry? Yeah, yeah, just over, just right around 11, so. Okay. Awesome. And yeah, you've, you've been, you've known, you know, you've been in all the certain, uh, you know, ins and outs of the, of the banking industry, I've, you know, I've throughout the years, you, you, looks like you came into it a little after the recession and now yeah. you're, now you're into it. So hopefully we don't yeah. hit another recession. So <laughs> we'll see. Whatever see time tells, so. Well, awesome. So yeah, you're, you know, you know, the banking world, you're the guy to talk to, especially right now um, today, which we just heard an announcement from the fed that, you know, rate increase of what, uh, three quarters of percent. Five. Yep. Yep. Three quarters of a percent. So, so, so welcome Keith. Welcome yeah, to the show. Thanks for having me, Spencer. Awesome. So Keith, what, what kind of drove you to, you know, banking industry? Well, um, the banking industry itself, uh, I, I actually kind of have kind of stepped on that on, uh, just chance. Mm -hmm. Um, I was working at a, a small business before where a, an owner had three plate, three stores. And I just kind of was an integral part of what he did, um, with just understanding how a business ran. And, and so I, I kind of got a taste for liking business in particular. And uh, while I was in college, um, we, uh, got pregnant and didn't have insurance because it was a very small business. <laughs> and uh, I was actually running um, a deposit into the bank and getting some change for uh, for one of the stores and um, just kind of asked the teller, I was like, you like your job? You know, and, and uh, she just went off and sold me on, on an opportunity to kind of finish school and, and, and kind of work a little bit less hours and get insurance all at the same time. And uh, so I, I went ahead and I just applied. And next thing I knew, I was working at a bank. And uh, just, just to kind of float me through a, a semester um, and get some, get some insurance, all that. And uh, in fact, the business owner is a great guy. I still follow him on, online. And um, so I, I look back at that as a very fond memory working for him and understanding the ins and outs of a business because he, he was very transparent. So I was able to see what what businesses did day to day, how much it would cost for him to implement insurance, and you know all of those things. So I learned all of the, all of those things before I even got into it. So then I got into uh, banking, and uh, it was a large bank, and so I was able to kind of see they just are are really transparent about growth, about where you can go, and how much you can make, and. And I just loved working for businesses. And so um, in about six months, I started uh, just as a, a banker. Um, and then I went into an ad, a business advocate type role right after that. And uh, then went into a manager manager role. Um, and all that time, they, they provided a lot of training. And so I just soaked up as much of it as I possibly could um, until uh Took about three years, and then I was able to get into uh, uh, the commercial world, where I went in as an associate, uh, which was actually here in Pocatello, um, and I worked with a very, very good banker, uh, Robert Cutler. If people know him; probably people probably do. And he was uh, in, in Tyson Coons. I worked with those guys, and they were kind of my mentors, and, and really got me going in the understanding commercial uh, needs higher than I ever had before. And then I kind of went on and took over my own portfolio and um, 
you know, here I am now. I've been at the Bank of Idaho three years now um, and have a small team here in Pokey and just uh, love doing my job, helping businesses, just being a part of a corner, you know, and they're in their, in their, in their uh, I don't know what you want to call it, just their path and their, their livelihood. It's, it's fun being a part of that. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I'm sure that being on the opposite side of things and seeing, you know, the struggles that some of these businesses have, the successes that they have. Yeah, you see yeah. it all, don't you? Yeah, you do, especially at a smaller bank. Yeah. You know, at, at a small bank, I mean, you're you're their go-to person when they have a bad month and when they have a good month. Yeah. You know, and, and so it's that's kind of what I was searching for and, and what led me to come to here was to have that true. We're, we're a very small bank. Um, in retrospect, I mean, we just uh, expanded a little bit, but we're still very small. We're not owned by a big conglomerate or anything like that. Bank of Idaho is is what it is. It's the people here. So that's fantastic. Now, I think a personal relationship with with a banker, especially as a as a business owner, is is key. Um, I've switched to institutions because of that. You know, I go, went from having a, a relationship with someone to now like, oh call, yeah, call Salt Lake. Yeah. talk to a complete stranger when you need something now like mm-hmm. like i you know and i'm not talking for all business owners but i feel like man you want someone there to like maybe you know lift you up a little bit when you're having a bad month <laughs> and maybe celebrate yeah. with you when you're having a good month you know like you need yeah. that you know yeah and someone that's uh, helping with your with your livelihood so yeah i agree i mean i just uh i just went out with a customer he uh he came in and he's like, I'm on track for my best month ever. And I said, dude, you hit that. I'm buying you lunch. And next thing you know, he came in, he goes, you owe me lunch. <laughs> you know, so we went out, got some sushi and, and enjoyed his uh, celebrated with him. That's fantastic. You know, I mean, it's an awesome occasion. And, you know, why wouldn't you celebrate that? Oh, you got so, it. You've got it. When yeah. you're a business owner, man, you've got to celebrate all the all the small things, all the big things, because there's so much stuff that can get you down. If you oh, yeah. It absolutely you know oh yeah 100 percent agree well perfect well let's let's switch gears a little bit here let's uh let's ask you you know you you see a lot of business owners and you deal with a lot of business owners maybe what are some let's start with maybe some of the three maybe if you have a couple uh key points of advice you'd give uh that you're seeing maybe successful business owners doing yeah and, and from your perspective and maybe a few key advices that, you know, you know, maybe some obstacles to watch out for, you know, yeah. on the other side. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, there, there's a lot of uh, venues. Uh, when I'm looking at, say, say if someone comes in and they have a request mm-hmm. uh, for a loan, um, and it, maybe if they've never done it before, um, you know, there. so there's a lot of venues that I see difficulty in and some that are unrelated and some related, but I would say one of the most important things business owners need to have is is someone within their organization that really understands finances. So not not just having a CPA, but having a CPA that is is an integral part of their business Um, so that they when they have a question on something, they can call that CPA that's response responsive. Um, When and or at least someone that really understands books, the the books. And so when I get a let's say I get a package and someone sends me a profit and loss and a balance sheet and they don't balance you know <laughs> yeah. those are those are things that uh, are a cause for concern for quality of statements um, and we do see that often not all the time but those that have someone in their corner even though they may be paying more for it have a much higher quality financial statement and that also tells them exactly where they're at yeah. and so they can make different adjustments and movements according to what that professional is telling them as a lender, I can't I can't call someone and say, hey, you need to change this or you need to charge more because we have some lender liability laws. Um, but uh, we actually will work very closely with the CPA. And so when we do get something or their bookkeeper, you know, if they have a really good bookkeeper, uh, we'll call them and, and be able to have a really good conversation and understand maybe what this item is on their balance sheet or their prop or their tax return, whatever it may be. And that makes it really easy as a bank to to feel confident in in what we're looking at, and also just how 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 good of a handle the owner has on their business, because yeah. that's what we do. We're in the numbers, and and we want we want them to be successful. And but that's our that's our governing rule are are their financials. 
And so when we get down to the nitty gritty, uh, we actually do something uh, to help with that as well. Um, it's a proprietary thing that the Bank of Idaho does. So we have one um, where it's, let's say we have someone come in and they, they're really financially strong or, or we can't do the loan for them. Well, we call it Vital Insights. And, and I'll actually take those figures and I'll put it in a very easy to read format that's non-bank jargon. And I'll say, okay, look, your debt service coverage is this. This is why it's super important to the bank. And this is how we got there. And what we do is we give that back to them and, and we recommend that they give that to their CPA. And then they can, they can say, hey, this is why they're seeing this. Uh, and, and it's a really cool tool for them either to kind of turn things around or just get to that next level um, or just feel good about it. You yeah. know, because some, some are doing really well and, and we give it to them and they just, it's a big, good pat on the back that says, this is what the bank looks at. Because uh, from a commercial side, you know, credit score is important, but that's not our, our leading factor. And if we're going to do a loan or not, yeah, so right. it, it, it is a factor, but it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's cash flow, it's, it's your know, collateral position, all of those things are, mm -hmm. there's way more, more factors than you would have if you're just going in to get a loan for a truck. Man, I, I totally so, agree with that. So just a really good partner that understands finance. If, if you, you know, they understand it well, then great. You know, that's, that's one thing I see a lot of. Um, another thing that is a huge pitfall and it makes it really hard for us to help someone is if they want to, let's say they want to do a startup, they get going before talking to the bank. And, and so they, they're kind of halfway done. Like it's, it, it makes it really hard for us to come in and help. Their cash has been li liquidated probably for buying work for whatever purpose, you know, tenant improvements or whatever. So I would, I highly recommend if anyone is out there looking to start a business, um, then call the bank, call me and ask, you know, what you need to do. And, and I'll, I'll give you resources, you know, the ISU, at like Claudia and, at, and those guys over there mm -hmm. and Swanson, they'll, they'll sit down and they'll help you with a business plan. Yeah, uh, yeah, they'll do all of that. Yeah, they're great. They'll do all of these things to help you prepare for that, that, okay, let's send this in and let's do this. It helps you get a really good idea. But when they already have the process started, it makes it really hard to pick up from there. So... Yeah, I would imagine that. Yeah, I would um, I would second what you're saying about the the bookkeeper. Well, this is something we've preached on this podcast over and over again is no, number one is know your numbers. And number yep. two is just, you know, don't be cheap. Come on, people. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's probably the best 250 bucks a, a month that I spend is on a bookkeeper. Like, yeah. this is coming from someone who's not good with numbers. Yeah. Who has, I have a form of dyslexia, you know, so like, yeah there's some stuff I deal with. And I'm like, dude, I know that's not my strength. Obviously yeah. I need to hire some smart people to handle it. Yeah. I know how to look at my reports. I know exactly what I'm looking at and what, you know, what you guys are going to be looking for. And yeah. I need, and I, every month when I look at that P and L report, you know, it's got to check out and I look at percentages. That's all I really care yeah. about right, for me is percentages. Okay. What, what percentages yeah. of my cost goods sold? What percentages of my overhead? And if mm -hmm. those match up where they, where they usually should be, we're good. You know, yeah. there's no reason for concern, but, uh, and if, you, if people, I'll give you one more too. I think people don't have a very good, a very orderly, uh, P and L things are just out yeah. of order. You know, yeah. they don't have true understanding of what should be in their cost of good sold categories. Yeah. What's what should be in their overhead categories mm -hmm. and it's all jumbled. So they don't really yeah. know what they're looking at you know, they don't even know if their net profit's right at that point, you know? So, yep. hundred yep. yeah. percent, you know, do, do what you're good at people. Like, don't, don't try to be Mr. Cheapskate or Mrs. Cheapskate and say, Hey, I'm, I got to save a few bucks and, and I'm going to do it. Even though I'm horrible at math, I've got my shoes and socks, you know, socks off counting with all my toes and fingers yeah. to, 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 to do this stuff. And no, that's not how we do things. So yeah. uh, that's a very good point. That's a perfect point you've made there. So yeah, thanks. Anything, anything else were, uh, that you've uh, come to realize over the past years you've been in commercial real estate? I mean, not commercial real estate, commercial lending. Yeah. Um, you know, transparency is key. So um, that's another thing. Some people try and kind of maybe hide something uh, or maybe they're having a hard time and they don't call the banker. Um, that puts it, it makes it really hard. Silence is, is the worst enemy. 
Yeah. Um, and so it makes it really hard for us to help them. That I don't think a lot of people understand, but if they have a hard month, they're scared to call us and, and or not us, but just a, a bank in general, right? And because they're worried that they're going to get in trouble or, or something. But it, I mean, really calling us and letting us know where you're at, that, that puts us in a position to best help someone. Uh, it, whether it be refinancing, um, you know, getting the payment lowered, something along those lines that maybe helps with that stress um, before it becomes a problem. Um, and so that's that's what we're here for. We're a sounding board for people. Um, I, I think as far as uh, just a, if you put it into three spaces, that which maybe you can't do that, but I think every business owner just needs, a, I didn't really um, understand this as well as I did until uh, the last kind of crisis when COVID really hit. I didn't realize how uh, integral I could be with some business owners. And I don't think I ever felt truly needed as much as until that specific time. But a good attorney, a good CPA, and, and a good banker um, in a room together with a customer can just make magic happen. So. Man, I concur. And that goes back to just having that personal relationship with a banker, not... Yeah. You know, and, and no offense to some of these banks that they try to have a non-personal uh, approach to their commercial lending apartments, but gosh yeah. dang, guys, it's it's yeah. yeah, it's key. It is, I agree. So, so. well, that's very cool. Um, let's let's move on a little bit, just with what's going on right now in in our economy. Yeah. With, you know, obviously, we just we just said that the uh, interest rates went up with three quarters of a percent. Um, that's one of the biggest uh, increases in my lifetime and in and, and most people's lifetime in this, uh, in the, in our, in our business environment right now. Um, what are some things that businesses, I, cause I know businesses are, and business owners are probably a little antsy, a little on, you know, a little on the edge of their seats, a little bit of like, okay, what does this mean for me and my business? What is maybe some of the key advice, uh, you, you, you provide to those type of people thinking, you know, what, what now, what do I do? Yeah. Um, I probably ask, tell them to kind of look at where they are uh, from a lending standpoint. Uh, what, what do they have right now that's on variable rates? Um, Cause those are going to, from what we see, they're climbing. I mean, one up again today. I mean, that doesn't mean it'll continue doing that, but those, those rates are going to be up there right now. Mm -hmm. So it could be a, a, an opportunity to try and fix that in some other way. Um, or if you have an operating line and you have good cash, pay that thing down, yeah. you know, um, and, and keep it paid down as much as you can. And if you can draw on it, draw on it. Um, but just always keep it paid down as much as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. uh, those are all things that are going to save, uh, especially when you're talking about much higher interest rates on, a, on just an operating line of credit. I mean, that will make a huge difference. And, and how you're utilizing your cash. And, that, and let's say you are cash, you're, you're doing well on cash. Now is probably a really good time to sit down with your the CPA or see what the banks have going out there for CDs. Um, all those rates are starting to come back up now. It's, it's sure. starting to benefit those with cash. And so, you know, weigh your options out. And, and I know the stock market's just a crazy place right now. Um, and so I, I don't want to get into that, um, but, uh, um, weigh your options out and, and maybe try and utilize your cash uh, differently now that rates are going up. Yeah, I can. So. Especially with inflation, you know, people are, the government's saying, you know, seven or eight percent, but come on. Yeah. Look at everything else, guys. We know it's around 15%. Yeah. Like you've got to yeah. be doing something with your cash or you're just losing money, you know? So yeah. it's almost scary to have too much cash on hand. When yep. maybe you should be leveraging it. Maybe you should be talking to Keith about maybe some locking some commercial real estate up with it or, yeah. or something like that. It's going to protect your investments. So, I mean, if you look at if you look at historically, I mean, and you look at where rates are today, they're they're truly they're higher than we're used to, yeah. but they're really not that high historically speaking. Oh yeah, and so and so there there are other variables, of course. You know, with the cost of real estate in, in specific is very high, but when you're talking about other things like lines of credit, and, you know, other those are, are up a little bit more, but uh, your rate is going to have a different different factor there. Sure. And so there there is that piece of it as well. So 
it, the whole idea is they want to curb all this inflation. I mean, that's the, the slow things down. And yeah. um, thus far, I, I don't know, maybe it'll work. I don't know. Yeah. I wish I had a little crystal ball to see, see the future ahead and see if it helps the supply issue or, or what. Yeah. So Yeah, seriously. Well, yeah, we, and we don't want to get political on this podcast because people will get, you know, <laughs> We turn in some heads over here, but you know, if I was a bank and I was loaning to the federal government, I'd probably cut them off years ago. So <laughs> <laughs> anyways, um, I like it. This is some good information, good things to hear. Uh, business owners, you're hearing this kind of stuff, you know, take some notes and think, hey, do I have a personal relationship with my banker? Do I do, do it? Does my banker actually care about, you know, what's going on in my business? And if not, Maybe, maybe, maybe you should uh, think, think it over a little bit in your head. You know, yeah, they should be, uh, they should be one of your biggest advocates. Yeah. So when, uh, for example, you know, I mean, if, if you don't feel like your banker is, is willing to go to, in my case, it's a small bank. So if they're not willing to call our chief credit officer and say, Hey, I really feel good about this deal and be able to have a really good, good conversation around that, then they may not be your, the best banker for you. So. Yeah. I agree. Or, or to have the heart to tell you, you know, what, what maybe they're seeing is an issue um, instead of just saying, we're not going to do the loan for you. Exactly. So it goes both ways. Cause there's going to be times when, when maybe you don't apply, you, it won't work. Yeah. Um, and, and understanding the why is vital. Uh, so they can either turn that around or, or maybe there's something that's missing. A lot of times that's what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say more often than not, if, if I see a big issue, a lot of times it's not, it's not truly an issue. It's just something that was not done correctly or we don't understand, or, you know, maybe they, they pumped hundred thousand into a one-time remodel of their business. And, and so their P and L looks a little weak, Exactly. you know, and all it is a phone call. Hey, this looks a little weak, you know, talk me through that. And then we find that out um, instead of just a blanket. No, that's not happening. Yeah. And uh, speaking to that point, you know, if you do have big expenses on one month, and it's something that you're you're going to continue to use for the rest of the year. You know, I, I like to have my bookkeepers, you know, divide that out amongst the rest of yeah. the months of the year, so I don't have one steep, crazy yeah. month. It looks like I have I made nothing or or I lost <laughs> money that month compared yeah. to evening and out throughout the year. You know, it makes it yeah. Better. So yeah, exactly. I, I like it. I think a lot of business owners. And I I won't say I I think a lot of business owners. I some business owners. Because I, I was one of these people back in the day was um, they didn't understand or they don't understand how to properly fill out their personal finance statements. Yeah. Or what to I see include. that a lot. Yeah. They don't know what to include, you know. Yeah. And I had a, a banker, you know, I think it was just, you know, a couple of years ago say, hey, you know, are you are you sure? Because he knows me pretty well. He's like, are you sure you're including all this and this and this? And like, yeah. wow, I didn't even. I didn't even think about that. And it yeah. helped my net worth just go crazy yeah. high, you know? So yeah. it's, 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 it's good to have some advice coming from yeah. you know, your guys' side coming to us. So, yeah, we're actually overhauling the, our personal financial statement right now. So just to make it so much easier for someone to pick it up and just be able to do just that, just understand it and make it as easy as possible for someone to understand where they sit personally. So I love it. I love it. Well, uh, I know we, we skipped down on one of our sponsors. Before I get into to the lightning round, I better hit one of our sponsors here. And it's Dell's Outdoor Advertising. These guys are phenomenal guys. Uh, give Rob a call and he will give you a free installation or your first month for free if you sign up for a three-month deal with the di traditional or uh, digital billboards. And you can reach him at 208-232-6886. Again, give Dale's Outdoor Advertising a call today. And then new, let's move into the lightning round. We're sponsored by my company, New Clean Commercial Cleaning. You know, we are the guys that are your professional toilet scrubbers. So if you need, if you need to <laughs> need a little extra attention in your business, you know, or your banks, whatever it may be, we're, we're the people for you. Uh, and if just by listening to this episode, you, you give us a call at 208. 254-7070 and say, hey, I heard about you on the podcast. We're going to give you two of your restrooms in, in your facility cleaned, all your, your uh, 
your tile and grout on in those restrooms clean cleaned absolutely for free just for listening to the podcast so sweet all right keith lightning round here we've got three quick questions for you uh what's maybe your best book or tool or software you've uh been in touch with uh recently that's kind of been a game changer for you oh recently um or 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 in the you know next last couple years even yeah so well my biggest tool in my tool belt is excel i live in excel understanding excel and be you can do almost any formula you want in there um for me personally but uh um and that's a hard one actually i've read some really great um books uh, recently as well i man that's a that's a hard one there, there was a something that i had to share with someone a little bit uh, recently i am a fast-paced person mm-hmm. um i like i like to just move and grind and, and get stuff done and and uh and there is an art in slowing down uh, so i read a little bit about it. i've been focusing on that slowing down a little bit honing in on your target and kind of taking a breath of fresh air a little bit and then going back into it so i I've been doing that a little bit and I found um, it is very, very effective just to just to slow down a little bit and then get out and hustle, you know, in another way. So go out, meet people, network, um, and then just again take take a take it all in and then rehome. So I agree. Uh, I love it, man. Okay. Uh, and we may have covered this already, and you can tell me if we did, uh, or okay. if you have another answer, shoot away. Biggest myth business owners need to know the truth about. Oh, on from your perspective, um, <laughs> that's a that's let's see biggest myth. Well, I don't know if it's a myth, but I, I think there's a lot of people that make a choice when they do their finances, and it's it a lot of times people will choose the the path of uh, just not showing much of a profit. To avoid taxes, <laughs> write everything off, <laughs> write everything off, and even if it may be not 100% business, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, and then there's the 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 true the true form of just showing what really happened, and, and that can that makes our job harder if they want to get a loan. <laughs> if you are one smart cookie, I'm telling you right so, now, that's something so. we talk about a lot. It's always running your business as if you're going to sell it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So that, that's one thing. And, and maybe just because you said that, um, when you are wanting to sell your business and make sure you bring a CPA in early, I'd say three to five years in advance of when you want to sell that thing and you get them heavily involved. Um, and, I, and whether it's a bookkeeper, I highly recommend a CPA or someone in that. In the, or for example, um, there's several CPAs that specialize in selling businesses. And even evaluating businesses, um, I, I highly recommend doing that. Otherwise, you're going to put it on the market, and it's not going to move. Um, I, I also recommend um, um, there is a Arthur Berry Company. Um, so Chip Langrack, I don't know if people know him out there. He's a business broker. So those looking to buy or sell, he is a huge asset, oh, yeah. um, and and doing just that. So just another person to know. So you know, if you're going to sell with a broker, you're going to get top dollar. Yeah. You're going to buy. That's their job. You know, you're going to pay top top dollar. (laughs) (laughs) But you're going to have a very clean experience as well. Exactly. So the the books are going to be vetted. It's a, it's, it's a win-win on both sides. It, 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 yes, is it can be expensive, but in my experience, the, some of the best loans I've worked on are through brokers on startup or not startups, but acquisitions themselves. Yeah. I love it. The organization, I'm sure, is there. Yep. Yep. All right. Last question. What's one question I should have asked that I did not? And what would be your answer? Ooh. I think you nailed it, man. So um, I still have birds. You still so. have birds. <laughs> I got to tell a quick story about this guy real quick. I've known him for a while. And there was one day... I always see he always had birds in his backyard. And then there's one day he always had this duck and that duck was not there one day. <laughs> and he had prepared that duck for me to, to not probably specifically for me, but he made me try that duck. 
And I'm hoping your skills of cooking got a little bit better by now because that that was the rubberiest <laughs> duck that I've ever had to throw down my gullet. But uh, well, you probably ate more than I did. <laughs> that, was, that was my experience with Keith. But but I think it's gone up. So I, yeah. I got a Traeger, so it just makes all my terrible cooking better. Oh, so. there you go. Just smoke it out. So <laughs> smoke it out. <laughs> That's good. All right, man. I love it. So, man, I, I got some great gems from you today, man. This is fantastic. I'm sure our audience is just loving life right now, listening to it as they listen to it in the future here. But uh, thank you for coming on, Keith. Yeah, you bet, man. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And again, everyone, as always, you know, go out there and conquer your day, conquer your week. Don't let any negative Nancy get you down or throw you, throw you out for a loop thinking that you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. There's always something out there you can push yourself through. And uh, just like Keith said, sometimes you just also need to slow down, take a few breaths, write yourself some lists of what you need to get done, clarify your mind and go forward. So until, until next time, again, thank you, Keith, and we'll see you later. Congratulations on spending a couple of minutes getting a little bit smarter, having some fun, and supporting the Idaho business community. If you're feeling the love, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you are.